Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the ChrisVossShow.com. The Chris Voss Show. The call. Hey, I'm here with Jason Nunley. How you doing, Jason? I'm doing fine. Jason! Jason, I've known him for a long time. Uh, he's a featured porn star in many porn movies. No, I'm just kidding, really. <laughs> Jason, All private, tell, undistributed. T- tell us about <laughs> you and your plugs. Where do we find you on the interwebs, and what are you about? Well, you can find everything at jasonhacks.com. Um, jasonhacks.com. Also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and all the links again are Facebook hacks or jasonhacks.com. Your voice is breaking. Is that part of the gig? <clears throat> I got this, so this stuff right here. It's summertime in Alabama. It's Lord, been Lord. Really crazy, and I'm not made for these parts. It just really tears me up. I so should have got some coffee before I started. So Jason hacks. Do I tune in and see videos? You want? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? That could be my intro. I should start doing that. Jason. Jason. <laughs> 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 I do that more because I really, I just took some more Athadine and I, it's absolutely killing me. Um, but yeah, I, I, that that's funny. I should probably make that my, my intro. Yeah. People be dry heaving at home along with you going, oh my God, what is wrong with them? <laughs> so uh, we were having a discussion today over Bill Maher's recent uh, video where he actually coins a term that I've tried to describe in many Facebook posts and discussions that I've had with people. He coins a term called amosexuals, or another one that I've coined or uh, thinking I'm coined, someone's probably beat me to it, called gun sexuals. And there's a discussion on my Facebook that will go on uh, the blog uh, for the Chris Voss show that talks about there's two different types of gun owners. There's a type of normal gun owner that I, I endorse and that I feel are normal and sane. Uh, and they have guns. They just don't really obsess about them, talk about them. And uh, especially during, you know, after school shootings where people have lost their children and, and uh, deaths have taken place, they don't take to social media and make excuses, uh, obsessively arguing about there's somehow a justification between their rights and the murder of an innocent uh, child, uh, which I think is sick, wrong, and even if I owned a gun, would be just horrible PR, which I would never do. But it also speaks to the lack of mind or the lack of empathy, caring, or decency in human beings with some of these uh, people that are gun owners, and I note that I say some. And so me and Jason were having this discussion as I was talking about on Facebook, trying to piss as many people off with guns as I possibly could, about how there's this sexual... There, there's some people that you meet with guns that have a sexual relationship with them to me. And and to me also, those are also the people that we see shooting people down. They seem to have a sexual relationship with their gun uh, or a, a improper, or what, what's the word I'm looking for? They seem to have a, a disconnect from society, but they certainly do have a much better relationship with their gun and they turn on the rest of us. So uh, what do you think, Jason? What's your opinion on some of this stuff? Well... First of all, I, I own a weapon. I, I've got a gun. Um, mm-hmm. I, I actually really enjoy shooting guns. I, they're a lot of fun. We were talking about this before. I, <clears throat> I like blowing stuff up. I, it's a blast. I like shooting guns. Um, I live in a state where gun rights are sacrosanct, and we, you know, I don't know a man that doesn't own a gun. Literally, don't know a single man that doesn't own a gun. I don't know very many men that own less than two. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I was over at a friend's house. We never talked about a gun. There was a dog that had rushed me as I was walking to his house. He walks out with three fifty seven in his hand. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> he didn't bite me. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. I was, uh, I, dog, dog doesn't, need to, doesn't need to be rushing people in my yard. It's not my dog. So... <laughs> <laughs> we we have a way we have a way of dealing with problems uh, in rural America, and, and it mostly deals with animals putting food on the table, hunting for sport. There's not a lot of people that talk about guns in polite company, in the sense that we hear in social media about we need guns to fight against the man. Now, in a constitutional conversation, in a historical context, 
There's a reason that the right to arms is one of the first ten amendments to the Constitution clarified, because there was a concern in the framing of this country that another state or the state itself, the one that we had just formed, might become corrupt, and people may need to defend themselves against the state. And historically, there's a very valid and legitimate argument about that. But then in context of people suffering uh, violence at the hand of psychos, there's no relationship between those things. They don't need to happen at the same time. I, I don't see any value whatsoever in bringing up my gun rights, <clears throat> you know, that, that I need to defend myself against an overbearing state. That does not need to happen in context of people suffering because people children were killed by some loon with a weapon. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously, having conversation about keeping guns out of the hands of the loons and talking about responsible gun ownership, those are also not the same conversation. And, and I think people conflate these a lot, and they get crazy about it. Yeah, I mean, when we, we uh, a lot of times when those Bill of Rights were written, and, and I admit they were written for good due purpose, but I mean, at this point, you know, I, I, I got to tell you, Jason, it's gotten to the point, I've, I've done several posts on Facebook, that I'll just do a post about how, uh, you know, I'm disturbed at how often these school shootings are happening. One is too many. Um, and then I'll wander off and I'll come back. There's 150 to 200 of these uh, comments that are on it. And I just go, holy crap. And it's disturbing to me that they're, like, I, I know PR. I know the PR business. And, and, and plus I'm just a decent human being. So I know that if, if your child... Is was killed and it's all over the newspapers because it's a school shooting. I appropriately should not be on social media actively promoting the fact that guns are cool and whatever. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just rubbing salt into a wound that just is inappropriate. I mean, it's it's it'd be, it's the same to me as if you know you post on Facebook that you know your uh, relative passed away. And I write blatantly in the comment section, well, that's a great thing. Death is actually really good, and it's held up by the Constitution. Um, it's just horrible. And part of what I should mention this comes out of is we now have these wackos, and I'm not talking about all gun people because there are gun people that are normal and decent, and there's wackos that have guns, and that's what I'm concerned about. Um and they're doing this open carry thing where they're going into Wendy's and McDonald's and and just about every place you want, Walmart, Home Depot, and they're openly carrying assault rifles. I mean, they're they're just not doing pistols. These guys have got you know shit that they can take down a whole group of people, and they're scaring the fuck out of the normal people and the populace like us. And the the sad part about it is the NRA won't even come out against it. The NRA supported it. Um, and to me, this is a PR nightmare. You know, I, I'm at the point now, Jason, where I'm most ready to buy a gun so that I can show what a responsible gun owner should do. You know, I, I, I wouldn't gush about it on, on the thing. I'd be very quiet during times where people, people's children had been, you know, <laughs> gunned down. Uh, you know, the example of you winning a gun, we t we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, I've known you for like a couple years now. I've never, ever heard you talk about owning a gun. I had no idea that you owned a gun until we had this discussion today. Well, I, you'll probably see, you may have missed it, but you've probably seen pictures because I have posted photos. I've got a 21-year-old daughter. When she was a teenager, we took her out on one of her birthday shootings. And there's a photo of her with a with a revolver, and she was shooting a uh, a little five hour energy drink across the pond. Uh -huh. And it was it was neat because she could dance this thing around across the pond. There was a skill involved. I was impressed that my kid could shoot <laughs> such a small thing from you know forty fifty yards and dance it around. Guns are fun, and and I have a lot of fun with guns. I know that anti gun people would freak out by me saying. Shooting things and blowing stuff up is fun. But and I'll give you that, that, too. I'll give you that, too. I love watching videos of stuff being blown up. I've watched gun videos where the guy's, you know, shooting an iPhone up, and that's cool. It's fun, and it's, it's, a, it's a camaraderie thing. 
I used to go out with some guys. We used to get together, and all of my friends have much more interesting gun collections than I do. We would go get together, and I would get to shoot these different weapons. I've got a friend that uh, his parents own an ammo business, ammo manufacturing business, primarily support, uh, primarily distributes to law enforcement, by the way, uh, who are the largest gun fanatics on the planet. That's a conversation <laughs> Um, I mean, they like their weapons. They like their weapons, and they like brandishing their weapons. But if, you know, I, I have a lot of fun with guns, but I don't go around um, participating in mental masturbation about weapons. I, well, I don't... This is, this is the thing, too. I've never, ever heard you talk about them. Never, ever heard you talk about them. And, and well, if you bring it up, I'll have a chat about it, but it's sure. not a thing that... You know, I'm not. I don't think we need to add to the gun owner population. We got plenty of gun owners. It's not a religion that I want to, uh, to proselytize. Yeah. And <clears throat> you know, primarily the stuff that I do with guns are going out and shooting things that are far away. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to talk about with other guys who share that that interest. But it's just not. It, yeah, it's not something that I I don't want to identify myself by that. And see, to me, that's a healthy perspective to have on the gun thing, and it, maybe that's why I should go buy a gun, so that I don't, so that I can say that I'm a responsible gun owner. You're never going to hear me talk about it. Um, and I I what, what what always concerns me is you watch these people that have mental issues, and they have like we had the shooting recently of the paranoids. And uh, the government people and they shot two police officers and some poor standing stander by. Uh, not that the two police officers are poor either and getting shot, but uh, they were shot in uh, Las Vegas and they were just gunned down um, because two wackos. Um, you know, they they have this anti-government stance and gun stance and everything else and believing in revolution and stuff. <clears throat> and to me. This, the, having a relationship with your gun that you, when you talk about it, you're more sexually excited in your voice than you are talking about sex. Because I've had friends like this. If I have a conversation with them about sex with their wives or their girlfriend, it's about as mundane as it can possibly be. But you get them talking about their guns, and they become orgasmic. You know, where they're just, they're super excited about it. Is it possible that it's it's kind of like the same thing though with guys that are into football? Um, you know, I'm into football and I don't get orgasmic about it, <laughs> um, but I like football a lot. But I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pop a boner over it. One of the um, definitions. In fact, if I did, I if I did, I'd probably be one of the newest draftees in, from the NFL draft. I suppose if I did. Ooh, I so I didn't do my Andrew Dice Clay perfectly. I went there. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Not that so, I disprove that in any shape or form. I love gay people. So <laughs> I was <laughs> hickory dickory dock. So the funny thing about the, uh, you know, the, when you, and I think this was smart on Bill Maher's part, because Bill Maher is also a good marketing guy. He's very slick about this stuff. Um, he knows his audience, and he's good at marketing. He's good at getting a, a message out. And I think he's actually passionate about this message. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is, if you want to take a psychological, uh, simple question about any behavior and then define it as unhealthy, mm -hmm. for a healthy, sexually active person, the question is, do you like it more than sex? There you and go. That's, that's, that's how the I definition. If you like eating more than sex, you probably have a problem with eating. If you like yeah. drugs more than And you normally sex, see that in people that are overweight, especially women that are over obese. They I prefer use, food to sex. Yeah, that's a problem. food to sex. Mm-hmm. But, but let's talk about the crazy part, because I think these are different issues. I think there's a cultural problem, and, uh, and I think this is a reactive, anti-Clinton. It's a hangover from 1992. It's a hangover from the, you know, you even use the word assault rifle or assault weapons, and most gun fanatics would take offense to the term assault weapon. Um, an assault weapon, by clear definition, I, I know I'm being pedantic here, and I know I sound like one of the gun ranchers. No, you're you're making a point. But a, but an assault weapon is actually a weapon designed for the military. It it almost always is defined by fully auto option, and I, that's pedantic and it's nitpicky and it's very esoteric. And if you think that a, 
you know, if you think a revolver, if you go into shakes and hives because you see a barrel, then you're not going to be the kind of person that understands those definitions. Mm. And when Clinton and uh, con Congress chose to label weapons that a lot of ordinary people used for sport and for hunting as assault rifles and assault weapons ban that went into effect, um, it did rile up a rather passionate, vehement, anti-government, anti-gun uh, confiscation attitude. The funny thing about the assault don't weapon... You, don't you think some of those people... I know some of those people pretty well, and usually they're just looking for a fight. So no, I, it, it, I, just, it just was a great excuse to give them. I think there was already an undertone of anger and hostility. Let, let's talk about a couple of things that happened that started this way back in 92, because that's when the real crazy NRA, because, um, I mean, I used to think the NRA was pretty reasonable and responsible. They talked about responsible gun ownership, keeping guns safe. They talked about maintaining the Bill of Rights. But if you look at when it got nutty, it was after what happened in 92, when they basically they classified a large group of guns that a lot of us owned as assault weapons. They classified people who own those weapons as potential terrorists. They started, and they passed legislation to ban the manufacture or the sale of new items in that classification. Mm -hmm. When that happened, you got a pushback from the other side, as you always do. Just like when Alabama, well, I'm sorry, when um, in California passed Prop 8, there was a there was a, a small group of people that were pretty vocal about gay rights and gay marriage. But when in California passed Prop 8, you're a Nazi if you don't love the idea of gay marriage. You can't have a job in California at a high-profile company if you don't support gay marriage. No, you, you can't. Yeah. You can't even go to a church that talks about you know, gay marriage being wrong. If you are found out, you might not be able to get a job. Good thing there's no people in churches that live in Silicon Valley, but I don't think anybody's at risk for losing their job. But it's just, it's gotten, think about the swing back, the extreme. You're no longer allowed to have your personal beliefs. You're no longer allowed to participate in politics at any level that goes against the mainstream. And the same thing happens every time that you attack from a position of strength, a, a thing that people perceive as a right. It doesn't matter if it's gay marriage, if it's the ownership of guns, if it's the right to curse in public. Anytime well, curse in public doesn't kill elementary school children. Neither does gay marriage. Exactly. Well, there might be some wacko Republicans that will argue that with you that it does. I'm not, I'm not aware of a single uh, homosexual experience between two consenting or five consenting adults that ever killed a child. How many but, of them have you had? Um, <laughs> so, you know, one day that joke might get you a, a, a sponsor loss, just making that kind of crack. No, I love gay people. I'm just I'm just cracking on you, even though you're happily married. So but the, so the funny thing about the funny thing about this this thing, and what my point is, is that if you're let's say you support gay marriage, this is a good way to, to sort why are, of, why are we in gay marriage? We're supposed to be on guns. No, I think it's a very good it's a very good analysis. It's a very okay. good psychological okay. analysis. If you're if you support gay marriage and you which is a majority at this point. You support gay marriage. Think about how viciously you're willing to defend that position against a government that comes in to tell you that that's a bad thing. Yeah, but I don't think I don't think gay gay people haven't been you know harming themselves and becoming militant and killing people. No, but it's a. I agree. It's a different. But neither have such a large percentage of gun owners in America. Keep in mind, there's 500 million guns in America, right? Right. There are a lot of spree killers, but in contrast with the number of guns that are in this country and the number of gun owners, not even close. It's a, And the problem isn't gun owners. It's not even vehemently defensive gun owners. It's murderous psychopaths. And the fact is, and, and we have a lot of murderous psychopaths. That's a problem. You know, we had legal, fully automatic, forty five caliber, Tommy guns. You could walk into Sears and Roebuck and buy them back during Prohibition. Guns were so common because people lived in rural spaces. They needed them for defense against animals. They used them for hunting. And yet, how many recorded cases do we have until recently of children 
getting a gun and going into the schoolhouse and killing everybody. Yeah, and this is getting pretty consistent. This sadly. seems like a recent development. <clears throat> this seems like a recent problem. And I, and I think, I, you know, not to defend the gun wackadoos, but I do think there's a difference between the political... I will say this. In an environment of intense hatred, an environment of extremism, people that are bent, they're given toward um, violent behavior will probably be encouraged and latch on to that. But the question is, these two crazy people out in Las Vegas, I mean, do you really think that these were normal, safe, rational people in the absence of gun culture? Well, I, think they, they I think they started out that way. I don't think for a minute that you can blame gun culture, even the crazy gun culture. Well, you I, I, don't, I don't want to blame gun culture. What I'm, what I'm specifically talking about, and of course, what I'm addressing with the Bill Maher thing, and a lot of this comes from, you know, these guys who are carrying these weapons now into open public places, which is really backfiring on them PR-wise because now the companies are coming out and banning it and saying, you know, no shoes, no shirt, no guns, no service. Um, the um, – or guns, no service, I should say, I guess. But, you know, I, I'm talking about this, this disparity that we have in our society to make excuses – and, and to love your guns so much that you can justify that someone's going to, that it's okay to kill kids because you're like, well, my rights are more important. I, I've, I've literally seen that said on Facebook. Someone made a comment saying, my rights are more important than kids dying. In fact, didn't Joe the Carpenter or whoever that political he guy did. was? Yeah, he's 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 something very similar to that. There's the thing about it. You can defend you can defend your right to own weapons, and there's a there's a reasonable context for that. Mm-hmm. One of the problems is that the other side, the gun banning side, every time that a tragedy happens with a weapon, they want to use that as the excuse and the reason to start um, turning that into a political thing. It's disgusting on both sides. You should not turn a tragic event into a political campaign. We need to deal with tragic events as they really are, as tragedies. Well, they are tragedies, and, and my argument always is is we need to do something to improve things. Now, if that means tighter laws, that's fine. I don't believe I should take your gun away. I don't believe I should take your rights away. But I think there should be deeper checks. I, I don't know how this happened, but years ago, I had an employee, and his name was Mitch. And Mitch had some serious mental issues. You could just tell. He was barely operating in normal. In fact, I think I ended up firing him. Um, but the ideas that Mitch would come up with were just out of left field. And Mitch was a sort of creepy kid that if he ever, if he, the police ever called you and said, you know, we found like four bodies in the guy's basement, you'd be like, yeah, we've been wondering about that, you know, this whole time. And what was funny was, is Mitch somehow went to get a gun and couldn't get a gun and actually had a judge have him psychologically assessed and the judge found that he wasn't, worthy of owning a gun. Now, this was in the late 90s. Um, so I don't know I don't know how that happened or how he got into the court system with it. Maybe he had a gun and he used it and the judge took it away from him over trial. We never did find out how that happened. But to me, there should be more of that going on where people should be more litmus test as to their mental stability, why they have guns, why they have a need for multiple guns. I've never met anybody who has 12 guns who doesn't have this whole paranoia about the U.S. government and all that good shit. Look, I'm smart enough that even if I owned a gun, I know that I'm probably outgunned by the U.S. government. They got weapons, shit, and everything else where if we really want to have a militia war, they are going to win. Plus, they're probably going to know about it since they listen to everything we do. So, They'll be outside the door ready for you when you come out. So this whole this whole paranoia thing about having, well, you we have to have militias and guns in case we have to overthrow the government. Um, you must be a fucking idiot if you, that's what you think because they're going to outgun you. They got a lot of great fucking weapons. They got an army. I, they got all sorts of shit. They're going to win. Is the, I mean, but Chris, the fact of the matter is an, an armed population – this is one, you know, there's reports and rumors about China doing analysis during Vietnam about the possibility of succeeding in a, in a land invasion. 
And I know the weapons have come a long way on the government side since Vietnam. But, you know, the story is, I've never looked at I should look this up. So we're the first line of defense against the Chinese invasion? No, no, no. It's not a first line of defense. It's a, it's a resistance defense. We failed miserably in Iraq. Miserably failed. And all they had in Iraq was AK-47s. Bad AK-47s. They didn't have Iraq, the Iraq resistance. Didn't Afghanistan have, the same way with Russia. Afghanistan. I mean, those guys had basically like rocks and uh, and you know improvised explosives they made out of stuff they could round up. The fact is, a, weapons do make a resistance against not an invasion and toppling a regime because you can't you can't defend against overwhelming power in that case. But it makes a difference when you go house to house. When you go house to house. Let's say Nazi Germany. If 15% of the population in Nazi Germany had weapons and were willing to use them to defend the Jews, what would have happened? Now, I'm, I'm to some degree recycling the arguments intentionally of gun fanatics, but there's some solid background for that. There's a history. It makes it really you know, difficult to oppress I people when they have weapons. I, I, think, I think that the history argument can be thrown out I think we have more mental illness today. I think we have more economic depression and economic um, aggression. See, talking about the real problem. And, and, I, think and I, 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 think, I think we have a real de-evolution of our society. I think we're stupid or dumber and, and uh, more at a loss for who we are than ever before in the society. Um, and I think we're just getting fucking dumber. Um, and I'm not talking about smartness on a scientific level or other things. I'm just talking about common sense. I mean, we have to put up fucking signs now that tell you not to jump off the bridge because it will kill you. <laughs> I mean, fuck. When you and I grew up, they didn't even, number one, they didn't know about it, and they didn't care. Like, they're like, hey, let's take the children's yard, uh, schoolyard, put, like, the playground uh, toys 15 feet in the air, and then put fucking pavement on the thing down. You know, and and no one thought to go, hey, what if a child falls and hurts himself? Well, he'll get up, he'll scrape it off and walk off that broken, uh, fractured uh, compound leg with his bones sticking out. This is the flesh wound in our day and age. And, and that's what I'm talking about. You know, common sense-wise, we're just getting fucking stupider and stupider. And, and I'm part of the problem because I'm not that brilliant of a guy either, I suppose. Or at least I think I'm not. But, so let me ask you a serious question. What, what is the um, – well, ha, of these people, we, so we got, what, nine recent shooting sprees, right, where yeah. wackadoos went out with firearms and did serious harm to people. How many of those nine cases was no one around them aware that those people were crazy? Everyone was aware they were crazy. Their family was aware they were crazy. Um, Every but, single case, they were now, people. They also had a relationship with their guns. They had yeah. an unhealthy relationship with their guns. They had almost a sexual relationship with their guns. Well, and this is why it keeps coming back to my thing that I'm really concerned about people that have this sexual relationship with their guns, and that's why the topic is called, you know, gun sexual and ammo sexual. It's one thing to have guns and talk about them. It's another where you're orgasmically involved in them or they're your only relationship. Like you look at the Sandy Hook uh, kid. He had guns and, and uh, ammo all over his room. He wasn't hanging out with anybody, even his own mom in his own house. And, and his mom was aware that he was emotionally disturbed and allowed him to have guns. Yeah, and, and, and you know, the other thing that I'm all about in the society that, you know, this is one of those ex extreme things that will never happen because I'm sane, um, is if you know your child's a fucking nut job and he goes off, you get to go to jail with him because in every single case of these fucking children, the parents failed. The parents fucking failed. Well, in, the in the case of Sandy Hook, she's dead. Well, so... I there you go. Well, that's justice served. Um, <laughs> You'll get a comment about that. I, you know what? I'm sorry. That woman knew that kid had problems. So, so here's, she took him, here's let me talk she took about him to a gun range. She took yeah, him to a gun range, 
And she's like, she's like, well, it's the only thing that turns the kid on. Hey, that should have been your first fucking notification. There's a motherfucking problem. It turns the kid on, and he has social problems. What the fuck are you doing? So here, here's a, um, here, here's a. Let me segue to like a real solution. Um, we live in a society that has a, an unhealthy obsession with firearms. It is unhealthy. We live in a society where people feel like they're being oppressed. Um, that's a problem. We live in a representative uh, democratic state, allegedly. People shouldn't feel like they're oppressed. There's, there's a problem with that. We live in a society where cliques of people get together and talk about violent overthrow of the government. And nobody thinks that's an issue. No, I mean, that's a problem. We live in a society where we have an increasing number of people who are on antipsychotic medications who go around telling people they want to commit mass murder and we let them walk around. That's a problem. And then we have parents or society in general who either sell or give high capacity, very volatile firearms to people who go around talking about committing mass murder. We have a cocktail for destruction. You could take a lot of those things out of the picture with but a little bit of social how do we, Yeah, how do we solve this? What do you think, Jason? Is it, well, because, is it because we're disenchanted with our politicians? Is it because we're disenchanted with our government? Is it because we're going broke with overtaxation? Is it because, because of jobs, middle class disappearing, not making enough money, uh, health care you know, skyrocketing, all these different issues? Is that what it is and we're turning to guns? Um, yeah, I think for some portion of the population, you could probably line those all up as reasons for why people get extreme about guns. It's very important to realize that out of the crazy gun wackadoos, people that belong to militias, I'm talking about the extreme crazy gun wackadoos, not just my friends that have 10 rifles because each one shoots a different caliber bullet and we have fun blowing crap up at the range. I'm talking about people that go around, as you talk about, you know, the, the ammo sexuals, the gun sexuals. Um, we should get now T-shirts. Are you gun phobic or ammo phobic? I mean, anyway, um, <laughs> are you gun phobic? <laughs> are they? No, we're, you know, we're going the other way, PR wise. But so people, people who fit into that category, the really extreme crazy gun wackadoos, virtually never commit violent acts with their weapons. It's this tiny, 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 small group of people. And I'm going to tell you something. You name, a, you give me an example of a spree killer who's w one of the ones we're talking about, schools, uh, going into public places. Name one who didn't tell people they wanted and planned to commit mass murder. Not yeah. one of them. Every one of them had talked about it. And we, you know, during, I forget, I think it was during the 80s that we, um, we sort of renovated our attitude toward the mentally uh, challenged, mentally ill. Um, you know, it became very taboo to talk about treating mental illness. We, we let people out of institutions that had been locked up for decades. We stopped putting people in institutions. I mean, in the 1950s or 1960s, not one of these people would have been free. Every single one of them would have been institutionalized. And I'm not suggesting well, we return back, to that. Back in back in that day too, though, uh, and you're right. Maybe the institutions have more power to hold them. But back in those days, it was a little more acceptable for people to go, "Hey, you know what? This one's fucking crazy. He needs to go in." No, that's totally what it was. Like, even, like even the Kennedy family said, "Yeah, give yeah. that one a lobotomy. That one's yeah. That one's no. Yeah, I know Ted. Ted has a lobotomy, but he <laughs> acts whatever. You know." Um, no, it's totally culture because, look, the laws don't have to change. It's not a law thing. It's it, not one of the cases. There's no maybe, single maybe, maybe it's part of this parenting thing that we let these fucking kids get away with whatever they, whatever they want. And, uh, well, taking uh, a crazy kid to a gun range is, you know. Yeah, that's like, that's like insane. You know, if you know your kid's crazy, maybe you shouldn't be buying him BMWs and everything he wants and feeding the real problem at home, you know, the, the kid who killed the girls because he couldn't get laid, he was a virgin. Um, if you read his history, early on, he had parental abandonment from both his parents. He's a classic, 
kid that you see who has mother abandonment. That's why he has a problem with women and women of avoiding him because he has mother abandonment issues and he's very clingy. Even Jeffrey Dahmer, I read this in a lot of these different people that I study, the parents fucking fail. And usually there's something very early on that's disruptive. Jeffrey Dahmer, his parents not only got divorced, they've discarded him like a football. And he lived in an empty house where at one point he was actually scouring for food and, and hunting raccoons in the back, which is where he got his audacious interest in uh, uh, eating and possessing things that didn't go away. The reason he kept bodies with him and people that he killed with them, starting with animals at a very early age, is because his parents abandoned him. Um, and this starts at a very early age. It's the failure of the parents to do their job. And maybe we should be like a society where in France or other countries where, you know, we have somebody who comes out and helps a new mother, uh, you know, with, with the stuff that the new mother does, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, your mother Marjorie, I think, is the only one watching right now, and she she trolled us with the F word, so she really fucking enjoys the thing. But then, she's, then she gets the joke. She's really funny. She... She put up a second one saying, fucking can't adequately describe everything. But I'm not, I'm not really sure why she's insulting me saying that I have a two-digit IQ, but I don't really know what her point is there because it's like insulting with something I already Dude, know. Dad has a saying. Dad says, uh, my mom used to talk about dumb people, and she, she would talk about stupid people and dumb people, and my dad used to always respond. He would go, you know, Margie, um, 100 is the average IQ. That means half of them are dumber than that. <laughs> yeah, that's a George Carlin thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I, the problem's culture. The problem's culture, I think, if you happen to be a rational person, you find yourself in, in the uh, ecstasy of gun culture, you should reevaluate your affection for firearms. You should strongly reevaluate your attitudes toward public policy. Um yeah. The problem is, is we have these conversations in context of very extreme polar opposites. Of we're gonna, you know, we're gonna make guns unavailable to people. That's not gonna happen. There's 500 million guns. Uh, that means a lot of people own them. That yeah. means a lot of people are, are willing to be really devious about keeping them. You can't confiscate a half a billion guns. Yeah, you're not. Um, it's not gonna happen. This is a stupid conversation to even start. If we lived in a gun-free society, yeah, if we lived in John Lennon's description of perfect utopia, we wouldn't have gun kill you know, we wouldn't have killings in schools. Well, well the other know, honestly, it, honestly, if I was a gun owner, to me, having the nut jobs be able to get guns is an insult to me and makes me look bad. So I would be all for uh, bigger gun uh, background checks, litmus tests. Mental health fucking check. I mean, you don't have to go any further than you are now, though. I mean, when you've got a kid, every one of these cases, you've got people that had years. By the way, the guy in uh, Las Vegas, the couple in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. he had an extensive criminal history. I'm not even sure it was legal for him to have a firearm. No. I don't know if he had felonies in his history, but he had an extensive problem with the law. When you have people that are openly, first of all, if you tell people that you that you fantasize about murdering cops. Yeah. By definition, you're crazy. Yeah. You do not need to have a farm. We don't need new laws. We need people in policy place. We need people in pub in health, public health, law enforcement to grow some gonads. Because it everyone like the, the kid, uh, the kid in California, he was telling his therapist on a regular basis about these crazy thoughts he was having. Oh yeah, and I'm sure he. The yeah. therapist probably, by law, was required to report that to higher authorities. He probably needed institutionalizing. the The guy that was the the um, the case for the I'm almost losing track of stuff. The guy that went in and shot up the theater and the theater killings. That guy had gone to his college psychiatrist, had begged for help, was on antipsychotics, and had nailed a detailed report prior to going and killing those people, outlining how you plan to kill a bunch of people. It's just a matter of not doing your job. And we need to get people in these positions that are doing their job. Well, I think it's, like I say, though, I agree that that needs to happen in post, but also in pre-op, parents need to do their fucking job. Well, it would be nice, and that's a whole other hour-long conversation about 
you know, where we now live in a world where mothers are denigrated, um, parents who actually raise their kids are treated like, you know, stupid people. Um, your career is the ultimate. Owning stuff is the ultimate. Let me tell you something. If you like owning stuff and you love your career, don't have kids. I, I think there's very – yeah, well, I guess, yeah, you got a point. Pick, pick you, one and go with it. Look, if you like driving nice cars and living in clean houses and owning lots of stuff and having cash in the bank, let me tell you from a father or two, do not have children. Avoid <laughs> that. There's medical – you do not have to have children. It's 2014. So for you parents-to-be, you know, I don't know, 12 to 18, whatever the age is where you hadn't had a baby yet, go get that fixed now. <laughs> Don't have a baby. Because when you're 25 and you've got two or three rug rats in the house, both parents working all the time and not taking care of your children, not raising your kids, or thinking you get to have a 60 or 70 hour a week career, it's just not going to happen. You can't be a good parent and have two parents working 60 hours a week. You know, maybe you nailed it on the head. Maybe this is a product of the new the two parents working society. Uh, and it's a failure of the parents to be there and present. Maybe that is well, the problem. It's, it's very bizarre to me that we live in a world where we're a hundredfold more productive than we were 50 years ago. Uh, and, and look, I don't, want to live, I don't want to live like my grandparents lived. I, that's not something I want to return to. But we have, when my grandfather was a farmer, 90-something percent of people or 80-something percent of people were farmers. Today it's less than 3%. We're very productive as a society. As a society. The, the chemical age and the manufacturing age and the mechanical age and the computer age and the information age have brought us leaps and bounds forward in productivity. But something about the way that our society is structured, and a lot of it is greed, that we need to have more, bigger, better, keeping up with the Joneses, has gotten us into this world where most parents I know, there's both parents are working. And it's very difficult for two people who put in 40 or 50 of their best hours at work to then come home and raise kids. I mean, the last thing in the world that I want to do after 50 hours of work is come home and raise kids. It's mm -hmm. tough. And that's why when one person dedicated themselves 24-7 to raising the kids, the dad could come, and it was mostly the dad. I realized that, you know, it was a paternalistic world and I'm, uh, the feminists will go nuts on me for suggesting that was a good thing. But well, let's, just say, that, let's just say as long as there was one parent there home to achieve that. But, you know. but when it happened and when we had less wackadoos doing crazy things like this, we had, I think, a lot less social problems. When that was going on, not to say there wasn't a lot of bad stuff going on, but when that was happening, the dad would come home at 5 or 6 o'clock, whatever, after work, and he could spend leisure time with the kids. Being a parent is hard, draining work. And somebody has to do it. And outsourcing that to minimum wage employees is probably not the best way to, to build a good society. That'll get some comments. Yeah, well, I mean, there's <laughs> definitely a lot of stuff that's contributed to it. And, and like I said, I think the discussion shouldn't be about defending um the um uh this this is the discussion shouldn't be about defending why you need guns the discussion should be uh you know empathetic towards the fact that you know i i, I have this idea of a film well i'm not going to discuss it cuz i actually have a great idea for a film then i'm actually going to shop it but you know the discussion should be how do we prevent this in the future what do we need to have to stop it whether or not I own the gun, I can tell you. And, you know, I, I'm i almost, I'm, I'm this close to just going and buying a gun so that, you know, I can say, look, I own a gun, but I'm being very sane in saying that shit's got to change, shit's got to improve, laws have to improve, there has to be more background checks somehow, there has to be something that can stop more of these wackos from getting guns and from kids being killed, and I have a gun, so there you go, you know. Um, and oh, probably the, before, we, before we wrap it up, let's let's give some uh, let's give some bait to the uh, the gun haters out there. Let me let me get. <laughs> I think we they don't have enough material already. Hold on. I like I like how your mom I like how your mom is like 
Your mom, your mom made a funny comment. She's great. Uh, I Here like, we go. I love her comedy. Stand by my words, me and my Ruger. So. Yeah, don't mess with mom and a Ruger. Yeah, I, I'm doing? never oh, going to so mess with your mom just on it. Here's, here's your screenshot right there. There's <laughs> But. Uh, <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but no, you know, it, it, I think it's healthy that in two years that I've known you, I've never heard you discuss guns. I've never heard you claim that you own a gun. I, and, and to me, that's normal. That's healthy. That's what, you know, I, I'm looking on my Facebook feed and my good friend Chase uh, Barfield has put a post up. Um, and he's, you know, he makes a very good point here. He makes a point that this sort of open carry nutball shit that's going on, this sexual nature with guns, does not represent a majority of gun owners. And I agree with that totally. I think that's the problem is that once you start talking about this, people feel that you're going to take away their guns, you're going to take away their gun rights, and blah, blah, blah. No, let's just let's background check more. Let's, let's start looking over each other's shoulders maybe a little bit more and going, hey, so-and-so is talking about some bullshit where whatever. I saw the Facebook feed of the two uh, husband and wife team or girlfriend boyfriend team that gunned down the police officers in Las Vegas. They actually advertised on their Facebook uh, page uh, that they wanted a certain gun that would I probably kill a bunch of people. Um, and they actually had supporters. And instead of someone looking at that feed going, you know what, these people are unbalanced, maybe I should call authorities on this shit. Um, instead of doing that, they didn't do anything. In fact, there's one guy on there who actually comes on and says, you know, I'm a big purveyor of guns, and this isn't something you should be openly talking about. You may want to hide this conversation, and if you're searching for that gun, you may want to take and use, like, you know, a Tor browser and different things to uh, hide your anonymity. And I don't know how that guy feels right now, but those people that are in the comment section of that thing should be fucking ashamed because they supported a killer. And... Even with my friends, I sit and look at them and I go, oh, wonder that's going off, you know? Half the time when I'm with you, I'm just wondering if you're, uh, when you're going to pop and break down and start, you know, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but, I, you know, I don't, I don't fucking know. I don't have the answers, but all I know is that there's a way to make something better and we should all, whether we have guns or not, be actively working to make that better instead of making excuses. Yeah, I agree. I, I think any time that you defend... Um, to me, def coming out in defense of people, the right to keep and bear the moment after some wackadoo murders people is yeah. akin to going out and, and talking about my right to drink alcohol after somebody kills someone in a drunk driving accident. It, it's just really bad form. Yeah, it's just bad form. You just you just don't talk about it. I, I'm, I, I can't believe the NRA even says anything during these, these times. I certainly wouldn't. Um, in fact, I think the NRA sometimes has some some good PR where they just go, you know, we feel for the victims, but it's kind of, there's kind of a, a bludgeoning irony in them doing that. They really shouldn't say anything at all. At least I would, if I was in their PR department, um, because just saying something is whatever, but, uh, it is a grand tragedy. I mean, I, I, I believe that even if, like I say, even if I was, if I had guns and I was a gun nut, I would look upon something like this as a reflection of me and it would anger me and make me want to have tighter laws, make me want to have tighter restrictions so that the normal people like me can get guns and the people that are fucking nut jobs can't because they're making me look bad because I have a gun. And that would be my thinking, but then what do I know? I'm a dipshit. So uh, I really should just go buy a gun so that I can say, look, I'm a gun owner and this is how I feel. So, and I won't be joining the NRA. Does it, uh, you know, that's funny you mentioned that. I, I'm not a member of the NRA. And their their stance on um, certain policies and their attitude toward representing gun owners is why I'm not a member. Hmm. I, I'm not a member because I, I can't abide somebody who defends really, look, background checks for gun purchases. I'll go through a bullet list. I, I know we're running kind of long on this, but Background checks on, on gun owners. Yeah, I don't think a rational person really thinks that's a bad idea. I'm not talking about keeping a gun registry. I'm talking about a background check before yeah. you buy a gun. By the way, I've been through the background check when I bought 
uh, my first firearm, I went through a background check. I have a pistol permit. I went through my pistol permit process. I had a background check. I, you know, these are things that um, I don't. I don't think you. I don't think rational people are opposed to that kind of stuff. And no. absolutely certifiably crazy people getting their hands on firearms. I think anything we do to slow that down is a good thing. Yeah. Now, I, I think there's a reasonable argument, and the and the gun fanatics will come out and immediately say, "Well, passing a law." doesn't stop somebody. I mean, criminals don't ask for your permission to buy or steal guns. It, it's true. It's 100% true. They don't ask or, or um, submit themselves to laws. But we have cases, and if you look at the, especially the spree killing situation, not just gun violence, which is a really big problem, because that's a lot more, there's a lot more people dead from single shots in crimes all across the country than there are from these spree killers. But if you look at the spree killer situation, when people actively promote their desire to commit mass murder, I think as a society we should stop them from having weapons. Yeah. yeah. That just doesn't seem unreasonable to me. Yeah. I, I think they should I think you should if you have weapons or around weapons, you should go through a mental health background check. And uh and there should be an assessment. Maybe a judge has to decide. You know, I think, actually, you know what? I think the reason Mitch was, dis in my prior story, was, was uh, I think he was trying to get a, 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 a private carry permit. What's it called? A hidden carry permit? Concealed uh, carry. Concealed yeah. weapon permit. I think that's, because I think that's where you do have to go before a judge, or you at least have to submit something that, that uh, was. Oh, I had, a, I had a carry permit, and when, Every, every It's a local jurisdiction thing to get a carry permit. Some states have statewide regulations, but it's always a local. In my case, I had to ask the the sheriff's department had to give me permission to have a, a carry permit. And when I when I went to get my carry permit, I had to put references, and they did background check on my criminal history, all the basic. If anyone at any point had brought up a history of mental illness, that's grounds for dismissing a request for a carry permit. And mm -hmm. I would assume most responsible jurisdictions operate the same way. So as an example, if you've ever had um, a call for domestic violence to your home and you ask for a carry permit, there's going to be some query into that as to whether or not you're yeah. expected to get a gun. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's, important. <laughs> it's, important to, uh, it's important to know, though, and I think this is very important for people to understand, uh, on the gun culture side and on the regulation side, that it's really easy to get a firearm. And I'm not sure that I'm opposed to making it a little more difficult to get a firearm. You can go to gun shows, and if you've got ID and you pass the instant federal background check, you walk out with a firearm. You walk out with a fully automatic weapon, don't you? No, not a fully automatic weapon. There's a You have to get a FFL uh for a, a federal fair, firearms license for that. And mm. you have to get fingerprinted. Just to let you know, there's this idea that we have access to these ridiculous weapons. It is really a silencer. If you want a silencer for whatever the heck reason you'd want a silencer, you have to get a, a fingerprinted, a background check, it's a $200 federal license fee, and there's a lot involved in having the right to have a silencer. And you know, this might die the silencer. So. What's that? I didn't know it was legal till a few years ago. I thought they'd all been banned. No, you can buy shockingly scary stuff. I mean, you can buy. I I had a guy in my hometown who uh, tried to sell me an Uzi, uh, an actual pre-ban Uzi, uh, fully automatic, everything. And and he told me, you know, I made a crack about well, that would be kind of fun to play with it, but um, I don't, you know, pretty sure it's illegal for me to own it. And he goes, oh, you just get your uh, fingerprints made, FBI background check. They interview some of your friends and family, and you pay them 200 bucks a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I want to shoot it in the back, but I don't, <laughs> I don't want to go through all that. Why don't you come and play with it? Let me, let me shoot it. Anyway, I, um, we have regulations. My point is we have a lot of regulations, but it is, is probably still too easy for people who shouldn't get their hands on firearms. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Well, well, the last flash, the anti-gun people. 
Well, I yeah, I think we all agree. There's, and I think you represent the normal gun owner and the and the person that I respect in the gun community. Um, the people I respect in the gun community that have a healthy obsession towards guns, rather than an innately overly sexual, uh, excited sort of experience with guns. And uh, you know, even in my Facebook feed, I'm having uh, someone posted something that's very interesting about how to open carry. They actually show some responsible gun owners who have a holster of a pistol and they are dressed nice and they um, don't look like vagabonds who are there to kill you. Um, and they carry uh, they carry it in a secure holster. They have um, situational awareness. They avoid confrontation. They dress sharply. They're personable. Um, you know, I, I would flip the fuck out if I saw you walking into some of these places uh, with the fully armed weapon. First thing I do is dial 911 and run for cover. I mean, I have no idea what your fucking interests are, and I, and I wholly believe wholeheartedly in the stupidity of human nature, and uh, I'm not going to wait around to figure out what, which side you're on, man. And, you know, if you're close to me, you may find something lodged your way, uh, or I may just take you down, because I'm not going to wait around to fucking figure you out. All I know is you have an automatic weapon in a public forum, and and if you're carrying around a giant fucking rifle, you know this. Those the the guy who uh, was part of the guy, the third victim of the cops that were cut down in Las Vegas, was just some guy walking out of fucking Walmart. You know, he was just walking out of Walmart or walking yeah. in, and you know, wrong place, at the wrong time. Like I say, I'm not gonna fucking figure out whether. You take five seconds to figure out whether you're just a gun nut or, or whatever. That this is the other problem with that whole thing, the PR that these people are doing. They're creating a situation where something's going to go wrong. It's like running a bunch of ships through the Cuban Canal during the cr missile crisis, to where you could walk from one to the other. Somebody's going to collide, and it's when that happens, it's not going to be a great outcome, PR wise for anybody. And so. Um, you know, the NRA should really do more, but then I guess their constituents are sort of people who... I think that they cater to the... I think they cater to the extreme, just like that's the trend in America right now. Everybody caters to the extreme. Okay. You know, I find myself on occasion agreeing with the ACLU. I find myself on occasion agreeing with the Southern Poverty Law Center. I find myself occasionally agreeing with the NRA. Um, sometimes they're right. But, but they do have this really extremist, I, I guess it's their uh, their core contributors, this very extremist position. All three of those groups are are good for America in some ways, but really bad for America in other ways. Yeah. And then evidently it's backfiring on what, what the companies are doing is now coming out with policies saying you, know, you can't have open guns here. And they're going to start creating laws because these corporations are going to be like, hey, man, we don't want you fucking gun nuts scaring our customers away, showing up with some, you know fully automatic weapons in the stores. So what you're going to have is corporate America is going to go to legislatures and say we need to ban this shit now. So and, and just to and just to satisfy the pedantic pro gun people, none of these guys are carrying fully automatic weapons. <laughs> Okay, fucking whatever, man. I mean, you know, I mean, look at look at the picture that's on the Facebook video that will be on the thing here. Yeah, the AR-15, front some, saddle. These guys, yeah. these guys have scary fucking weapons to normal people like me. They they don't have they don't just have like a little pistol and a holster. I can handle that. These guys have over the shoulder, uh, you know, giant badass looking military things. I don't I don't care what you call it. I'm I'm a big purveyor of George, what George Carlin used to call the reason that we have problems is that we bullshit ourselves with with conversation and terms that that basically make things inept that we don't care about. You know, things like um, war, you know, he used the thing where he talked about soldiers who came back from war and they had, and they had uh, issues with it and how over the years we made it seem more and more mild and watered down with this cheapening of, of conversation or cheapening of terms we put to it. I don't, I don't care whether it's called assault rifle, whatever. To the normal motherfucking person, it's fucking scary. 
and you you don't need a weapon out in public that's going to kill 50 people within uh, a minute or two. And if you do need to be walking around with that, I think uh, that needs to be illegal. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't, I don't see a reason you need to be a fucking Walmart with that. It's completely inappropriate. It's rude. Um, and it, it's bad PR. I mean, I, I just don't get how how stupid someone would be to do that. I mean, I, I at least as a gunner would be like, you know what? That's going to backfire on us. I like guns, but holy shit, walking into Walmart and Home Depot with the with a giant, you know, scary fucking gun, that's going to put the population against us. We should probably not do that, because that's fucking dumb. But uh, you can't fix stupid, and stupid is as stupid does. So, um, there you go. Is that the final word? That's the final word. <laughs> Alright, well, thanks for uh, joining me, Jason, and be sure to check out... Jason, where can we see Jason? <laughs> <laughs> uh, JasonHacks.com Jason Hacks on most social media. Except my YouTube channel, yeah, where I'm uh, relegated to Jason Hacks Life. Jason Hacks Life. And that's mainly what you talk about, how to hack your life and make it better and all that good stuff. So be sure to check out the com. Give our video a like. Subscribe to us on the YouTubeage if you would. Tell your friends, neighbors, relatives, cats, dogs, cousins, people that you had sex with routinely over the last 20 years. Call them up. Say, subscribe to the Chris Voss Show. Or not, go fuck yourself. Thanks for coming by. I'll see you next time. <laughs> see you, Jason. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> what are you, Chinese?